Hello, welcome to part two of this lesson on the SUVAT equations. I'm assuming you've seen and understood part one, so we can move straight on to the next equation, which is S equals U plus V over 2 times T. We'll do a very simple example just to show how the equation is used. We'll talk a moment about average velocity, which is a useful thing to do in conjunction with this equation. Then we'll give a rather simple proof of the equation and do three simple problems. It will be useful if you have your pen and paper to hand. You don't really need a calculator, but maybe for the last question, the calculator could be useful. If you need to get those, pause the video now. Let's start with a very simple example of using the equation. A car travelling at 10 metres per second uniformly decelerates to 6 metres per second in 4 seconds. How far did the car travel while decelerating? There's a formula. Pause the video, try that for yourself. Well, if we want to put the basic data down, we can. U, initial velocity, 10 metres per second. V, final velocity, 6 metres per second. The time is 4 seconds. All we have to do is substitute the numbers. 10 plus 6 over 2 times 4 gives 32 metres. Let's say a word or two about average velocity now. Here are four graphs. Can you look at each of those graphs? and see if you can work out what the average velocity is for each graph. You may have to estimate it or you may be able to calculate it. So see if you can come up with values for the average velocity for each of those. Pause now. Let's go through it. First one starts at 0 and ends up at 8 meters per second. The average velocity is 4, what you'd expect. Remember that displacement covered is the area, and the area under the yellow line, that triangle's area, is the same as the area under that purple line, the average velocity. So they cover the same displacement in the same time, and the average velocity is halfway between 0 and 8. Note that because we've started from rest, started at zero velocity, the average velocity is simply half of the final velocity. You could say it the other way around as well. If you want to know the final velocity and know the average, the final velocity is twice the average velocity, but only because we start off from zero velocity. Next one, top right, from zero to 30 meters per second, Again, the average velocity midway. It's the average of 0 and 30, because this is a straight line. And again, note we've finished with the velocity of 0. And because of that, the average is simply half of the initial velocity. 15 is half of 30. Or if you knew the average 15, you could say the final velocity is 0, so the initial velocity must have been twice 15. That's quite useful. Look at the bottom left. Average velocity, well, you simply take the 7 and the 9, sorry, 7 and minus 9, add them together to give minus 2, and divide by 2 to get the average. It's minus 1. What that means is if you travelled with a steady velocity of minus 1 metres per second, you'd cover the same displacement as shown by the yellow line starting off at 7 and uniformly accelerating till you reached minus 9 meters per second. We just had to work out the average of the two values, 7 and minus 9. And the last one on the bottom right is a bit harder because you can't work out the value, you don't know the exact shape. But you can make an estimate, you can see that most of the time you've been going quite fast. So the average will not be between, will not be halfway, it won't be 25, because most of the time you've been going much faster than 25. It's probably around 40 something, call it 45, that's a, a guess. 47, 48, we don't know, but something certainly more than the average of 0 and 50. So providing the 
velocity changes uniformly that means a uniform acceleration or constant acceleration a straight line for our velocity time graph we can say that for uniform acceleration the average velocity is u plus v over 2 but that only works if you've got uniform acceleration constant acceleration now let's do a, a sort of quick proof of our formula that we started with average velocity is displacement over time. That's the definition of average velocity. We've covered that in previous lessons. So we could say Vav is S over T in symbols. There's a velocity time graph starting at U, finishing at V, and changing uniformly. So it's constant acceleration, a straight line graph. The average velocity will be halfway between U and V. It'll have the same area underneath it as the yellow line has. So we can say that for uniform acceleration, average velocity is u plus v over 2. Now, there it is in symbols. Let's go back to our top equation. I want to work out displacement. What do we get if we rearrange that to give s as a subject? We get this. s is average velocity, velocity times time. And if we substitute our expression for average velocity, we get the final equation, which is what we were trying to prove. So that's one way of proving the equation. Notice the equation average velocity times time is always true. Displacement is always average velocity times time, but only for uniform acceleration can we say that the average velocity is u plus v over 2. It's not always u plus v over 2 if it's not uniform acceleration. Time to do some problems. Here's the first problem for you. An electron has an average velocity of minus 4.00 times 10 to the 5 meters per second while it is decelerated uniformly to rest. What was its initial velocity? Pause and think about that. Well, if you remember what we said a couple of slides ago, in this situation the initial velocity is simply twice the average velocity. So without really doing any calculations, all we have to do is double our average. It's minus 8.00 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. Only true because it's uniform deceleration and we finish at rest. One of the velocities is zero. Try another one. A gun fires a bullet vertically upwards at 98 meters per second. The bullet goes straight up and reaches the highest point in 10 seconds. How high did the bullet get? And you can assume constant acceleration, which in effect means no air resistance. Pause the video, try that. Let's go through this. It will help because it's such a common problem just to remind ourselves of the velocity time graph. That would be it. It starts off with an upwards velocity plus 98 meters per second. As it gets higher, the bullet slows down. At the highest point, its velocity is zero. It's instantaneously at rest. Then, of course, it starts to come downwards, so it's got an increasing negative velocity. And it will return to the level of the gun after another 10 seconds, a total of 20 seconds. Let's calculate the height. For the first half of the bullet's journey, that's from the gun to the maximum height. V is zero, that means at the maximum height, the final velocity is zero. U was 98 meters per second, T was 10 seconds. We can just put numbers straight into the formula and it's trivial, 490 meters. You'll notice that all we had to do really was multiply the average velocity by the time. The average velocity was the average of 98 and 0, which is 49 meters per second, times 10 seconds, 490 meters. Let's do one final, slightly harder problem. I should say a proton passes through a 50 micron thick sheet of plastic in 30 picoseconds. 
it enters with an initial velocity of 3.00 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Assuming uniform deceleration, what speed does the proton leave the plastic? Now, if you're not familiar with these terms, let me go over them. A micron, often written as a symbol mu, that's a Greek letter mu, is a millionth of a meter. That symbol is actually incorrect. It's often used, but it shouldn't be. The correct symbol for a micron is 1 mu m, a micrometer. Micro means 10 to the minus 6. That means 10 to the minus 6 meters. That's a correct symbol for a micron, a millionth of a meter. Pico, small p, is a prefix meaning 10 to the minus 12, which is a millionth of a millionth. Bearing that in mind, pause the video, read the question again, and see if you can sort that one out. Let's go through the answer. The data we know is the distance travelled, the displacement of the proton, it's 50 microns, 50 times 10 to the minus 6 metres. The time it took was 30 picoseconds, which is 30 times 10 to the minus 12 seconds. And the initial velocity the velocity it entered the plastic with was 3.00 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So there's our basic equation. We're trying to find V. Let's rearrange the equation. If we multiply both sides by 2 and divide both sides by T, we end up with U plus V is 2S over T. To find V, we simply subtract uh, u from both sides and we get v is 2s over t minus u. Now we can just put the numbers in. 2s is 2 times 50 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by the time 30 times 10 to the minus 12. And when we've worked that out we've then got to subtract the initial velocity u 3.00 times 10 to the 6. That works out if you work through it as 3.3 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. And that's the speed with which the proton left the plastic. OK, that's all we need to do. Thank you for watching. And in part three, we'll cover the next equation, which you see on the screen now.